Okay, Mr. Dolan, we are live. It is a beautiful Thursday night here in Peterborough. What's the weather like for you in uh, Toronto? You don't want to know, man. It's wet, it's snowing, it's cold. It's the perfect time to uh, cozy up with a loved one, get yourself a cocktail, and join a webinar. That's what I say. <laughs> That's the kind of night it is right now. But, like uh, but gosh, it's, it's gotten cold here, man. And I know that uh, I don't get a lot of you know, empathy from all of our friends from across the country and especially out in Alberta. I hear you guys, you guys are freezing. It's, uh, it's, it's normal for a lot of you, but you know, for us folks who really live for a speedo season, I mean, <laughs> we, we really aren't used to this kind of weather. And by the way, that's, 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 I'm talking to you because you're a Frenchman. You know what I talk about when I talk about speedos. <laughs> you know, those, uh, those, those take me back to my youth, my man. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we want to go there right now, but uh, listen, Rich, we got people that the lines are filling up right now. I'm just keeping an eye on it. And folks, while you're logging in, let us know where you're from and let us know the temperature of where you're at. So, you know, my friends from uh, Fort McMurray, let's see, uh, let's see how cold it is up there. Friends from Edmonton, Patrick Francie right now, by the way, as you know, Rich is in Edmonton and he is cold. He's mm -hmm. cold. So, uh, that's because, that's because he's got a really low body fat count. I know. He doesn't have a lot of insulation like guys like you and I where we got a higher body fat count. So, you know, we don't, we don't feel the cold that much but, but um, because we got insulation. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, folks, listen, as you're logging in, hey, welcome, everyone. Welcome. I'm just going to get started and, yeah, give or say, uh, you know, 30 to 60 seconds. Wow, look at this. We got uh, – Downtown Toronto, aha, uh -huh, my buddy Jeff McLeod's coming in live. Richard, you oh. got to, yeah, I got to introduce you to my friend Jeff McLeod. The dude's an all-star, dude's name. Help me found my last company, by the way, the one I took from zero to eight figures in 14 countries. Jeff yeah. McLeod was responsible, co-founder with me. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever heard you speak publicly so positively about Jeff McLeod. <laughs> Jeff, you got to talk to your buddy here because that's the first time. No, I'm just totally kidding. Big talk, big, big talk. Good to see you there, buddy. That's awesome. So Stony Creek plus one, Fort Mac minus 28. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, Jeff. Uh, Sherwood Park, Alberta minus 17. Story Plain, Alberta minus 25. My gosh. Regina minus 35. Poor Don Rossum. He's dying over there. Poor Don. That's, that's, crazy. A, that's crazy. Well, listen, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Richard and I tonight are going to tag team this. Now, Richard, you and I, typically, either you're giving this talk or I'm giving this talk. And tonight, we decided, let's grab a cocktail and let's do it together. All right. Cheers, buddy. So, I cheers to you, brother. Thank you, buddy. All right, folks. We're going to dive deep. We're going to dive in. And we're going to get started. I think we're going to get through this in 70 minutes. That's my, that's my guess. That's my hope. So, Rich, we're going to have to rock and roll. We're going to have to go quick. Let's, let's set the context First and foremost, and tell me, Rich, what do we want to achieve tonight for these people that are listening from all over Canada? What do we want to achieve for them? They came here to learn. What are we going to teach them? Well, I think that the number one intention of all of us from coast to coast being on this call right now is to really get clear and present, clear and present to the opportunity of making more money in real estate by being a leader in that space, by providing some leadership in that space, and by being a different type of player in that space, by taking on what we call the future in a box. And Got so we'll talk about what's in there and, and what it's all comprised of, but I mean, in that box, there's something for everyone. And I mean, it really should be the happy meal, if it were, for tomorrow's real estate investor, because it's got a little bit of something in there for everybody. So, so I really want everybody to be truly clear and present to the opportunity of being able to see for yourself tonight within the next 69 minutes everything there is that you would need to make more money more consistently for yourself no matter what part of the country you're in by by taking this future in the box will be super clear for you by the time we're done perfect so rich tell me then you know, there's people here, there's lots of them. I, I know their names, I've recognized them. They know who you are, they know who I am, they know who Rain is, they know who Legacy is. But for those who are tuning in for the first time, and there are many from coast to coast, tell us a little bit about Rain, yourself, Patrick. Give us a down low here. Well, what's amazing is that uh, aside from being the, the third best looking guy on the screen right there, uh, and of course I'm talking about JG, yeah. 
That may have um, been the best picture I've ever taken in my life. I mean, you know. Crazy, man. But, uh, but look, 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 folks, I, I, I did not start Rain. I've been a huge admirer of Rain. I bought the books. I followed Don. And it was only until I got into the real estate investment space that I actually found Don, found Patrick Francie, and I became not only a member, I then became a, a consultant turned president turned co-owner. And so it, it truly is a great success story of how great relationships, when they collide, both are forever transformed. Um, aside from that fact, I've got 27 years of experience in the wealth management business. And uh, I taught at the Schulich School of Business, the Executive Development Division, on all things wealth management and all things sales and marketing wealth management services. I'm published. Uh, I'm a performance advisor to a lot of really cool people that include athletes and investors and business folk. Um, I mean, I've given advice to Drake on his uh, brand of whiskey. I've given advice to Ice Cube, Mike Tyson, all the way to the Miami Heat. Um, but the best thing of all, and aside from being a money editor for four years on City TV and CP24 right here in Toronto, um, I, I'm, I'm a dad. I think that's the coolest job I've got is I'm a dad of a 12 year old uh, boy. His name is Mateo. And, and not to say that's the ultimate job, but it's the toughest job I think I've got. That's, huh. that's totally beating me up. So, but I love it. I love and it. That's, and, and, and just speaking from, speaking from knowing you, Richard, just so everybody knows, that's not Mateo's fault. That's your fault. Mateo's a great kid. It's, it's, you know, it's you, it's not him. No, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and just as my good friend Douglas Robertson, I just heard you, buddy. Uh, I, the, the advice I can give the Oilers is just skate faster. But, but, but really, at the end of the day, I'm a student of self-help, self-leadership stuff. And I applied it in the world of money. And I've completely had a ball doing it because uh, I feel making money, preserving money, and building opportunities like a sport. And if you learn the rules and you master and mentor yourself through into modeling yourself after those who win really well – you can actually do really well. So, so this is where I decided to hang out and I'm really happy doing that amongst great people, just like you, JG, and just like our friend, Patrick Francie. Awesome. Well, that's great, Rich. Thank you so much. So folks, those of you listening, um, you know, coast to coast, you're wondering, you know, why should I listen? And I really wanted to start with this slide because there's two groups of people on this uh, webinar right now. The first group is real estate investors. There's a ton of you that are current real estate investors. You have doors, you have properties, you have investments. And you're gonna, what you're going to learn from tonight is how to attract partners, how to raise capital, how to grow your portfolio, and how to increase your cash flow, specifically up 25 up to maybe $100,000 a year for life. And the fifth one is a job transition plan. There's actually names on this list that I see right now, Rich, that have loved being real estate investors, but they haven't taken that plunge to get out of a job and jump into something full time. But tonight, what we're about to present, this may be the opportunity they've been waiting for. And, and you know who you are, folks. We want to know uh, if, if, if you are a real estate investor, put yourself down in that chat room and put your hand up saying, I'm an investor. And, and I mean, to JG's point, do you ever find yourself in the rain room, uh, at a conference, at a Starbucks, at work, at the dinner table with your friends or family, even the family you don't like, and find yourself giving them advice on real estate? how to make money, how to better their lives. You know, what I'm, you, you know what I'm talking about. And I mean, you do it because you're compelled to. You feel like you're called to. And, and as a result, you know that if the opportunity presented itself where you can actually, in fact, do it for a living, feel like you're lighting people up, that would be awesome. But, but you know that the only place to do it in, the only sandbox worth doing it in and getting paid really, really well is the real estate space. So this is where sort of real estate coaching kind of meets real estate investing. And that's, ah. what, uh, and that's what JG's talking about right there. Very cool. Uh, there's also a bunch of real estate professionals uh, that are here tonight. You know who you are, real estate agents, real estate uh, mortgage brokers, perhaps financial planners, property managers. And, and you're more than welcomed here. This is not for just real estate investors. This is for both of you. And tonight what you're going to get is a new marketing and lead generating system that you never thought possible. You're going to learn how to grow your business, specifically how to bulletproof your business, which I'm passionate about. You will also learn to increase your cash flow. And we're going to learn a system, Rich, and you, you're the master of this, monetizing every single conversation. You see, when you're rich, as you know, as a real estate, let's just say you're a realtor. Only, you can only monetize conversations when someone wants to buy or someone wants to sell. The other stuff, you're really not making any money. You're, you're helping, you're giving advice, but you're not helping. It sounds like, Rich, you're going to teach us how to monetize every single conversation. 
You, you bet. And you know, I'm just going to paraphrase because I'm all about compartmentalizing conversations into bite-sized chunks so that they're digestible. So if you're a real estate investor, tonight's about you professionalizing yourself. You write that down right now, professionalizing myself. So when your wife or your husband or the kids say, what was that all about? What were you on the phone for 70 minutes for? Why, have our, why are we still waiting for dinner while you guys have been... You're going to tell them that as a real estate investor, I'm now looking to professionalize myself. You got it. Now on the other side, real estate professionals that are already in the game, already playing, already knocking out the lights, this is about optimizing yourself. How you can in fact expand your capacity and do a little bit more without having to work harder. And that's what this move is going to really, really be all about. You're either going to be professionalizing yourself or optimizing yourself. Very cool. So now we know folks, we know what we're here to achieve. And by the way, Richard did indicate who's a real estate investor. A lot of you have already answered, but who's a real estate professional in the room? Who here is a realtor, mortgage agent, uh, property manager? And don't be afraid. You can say <laughs> you can say who you are because we want to tailor this presentation specifically for people. That's our aim. That's our goal. So, Rich, this presentation is split up into two particular parts. The first part is the future of real estate, and and you're really going to take on a big part of this because. You've been at this game a really long time. You've worked with some incredible, incredible people. And you know what? I kind of, there's a wave of opportunity coming in the real estate space and most people don't see it. And what you're going to do tonight is really illuminate what's coming and put people in a position that they can take advantage. That's part one. And then part two is we're going to talk about the future real estate entrepreneur, how to capitalize on the future of real estate, how to take advantage of it, how to really optimize your business so that you're in the best possible position to really kick ass in the future. Rich, anything you want to add to that? Well, you know, at the end of the day, what's up, Rob? Good to see you, buddy. I don't know if you're in San Fran or back, but welcome back. Um, you know, in terms of what this is all really about, uh, it's really easy to look back 25, even 50 years and know that getting into real estate is where those rich people came from right? Well, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. They, they didn't necessarily drive fancy cars and live in big homes, but they did smart things consistently in real estate. So knowing what you know today, would you have done anything different looking back 25 years? Well, we now have the opportunity, thanks to technology, thanks to statisticians, thanks to technology along with Google, that we can actually predict what the future is like. So tonight, what you want to see is this screen as if it were a crystal ball. And we're looking into a crystal ball and saying, hey, where is the world going for the next 25 years? Because I would like to go there and confirm it and then reverse engineer my life in such a way so that I can take the current actions and I can make the certain commitments and I can build myself into a world where I can make some money with certainty and confidence. So we asked our friends at Google, um, who by the way, Google's another cool name for them is the database of intentions, because I know you know this, but every time someone actually searches for something, what to do with sniffles or you know, what to do to remedy this or how do I find that, Google knows exactly what the world wants before the world declares it wants it. So, so that's the database of intentions. And we asked them the question, what is the future? What is the future of all things real estate? And the first term they came up with was prop tech. Now, prop tech is the term property technology, which is a spinoff of fintech, financial mm -hmm. technology. And, you know, my mother, who's actually in listing shop because she's visiting me tonight and she's listening way off in the corner there, but she's like shaking her head, what's financial technology? What's well, like the Interact card was the very first financial technology where for the first time you didn't have to touch real currency to in fact buy something. FinTech, financial technology. Prop tech is the same way. There's a lot of traditional, hands-on, tactile type of interactions with the world of real estate that's actually starting to make its way out because it's just dated, docile, and dusty. I mean, the world of the internet, the wave of technology, the elevation and integration of social media and our world has evolved. So we said to Google, look, we know the future based on your ideology is that the world is richer with technology. And so we asked the next question, if we had everyone on, if you go back one, just real quick, uh, brother, we asked them, what would you say are the top six reasons, the top six reasons why anyone right now would get into real estate in a big, meaningful, and measurable way? What are the six reasons? What are the six things I got to tell, tell my wife why I'm going to spend money tonight and, and, and buy a program and get into a thing and, and do this thing? These are the six. So let's take a look. First, 
is that there's absolute impenetrable and inarguable proof that the world is searching for real estate. Next slide. 1.67 billion people search on all things real estate in Canada, coast to coast. And they're looking not just for answers, they're looking for direction. You know what the problem is with 1.6 billion? We're only a country of 33 million. So what does that tell you? People are searching for things over and over and over and over again. And why? Why would you ask the same question of someone constantly? Well, if you're a parent of a 12 year old and you're asking them, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Guess why you have to ask four times of one child? Because they don't, they don't listen, right? You get what I'm saying. Now, why am I telling you that? Because the world of real estate isn't giving the right answer to the people who are looking for it. So that brings me to the second point. The second point is that, if you go to the next slide there, brother, is that there's lots of people searching. So here's the thing. We know that Canadians are looking for all things real estate, but what we also now want to know is who in the world is in fact looking at Canada as a place to, to in fact uh, invest. So if you go to the next slide, you'll notice that in Canada alone, over 700 and 50 billion, $750 billion worth of wealth is about to transfer hands between the old and the young. And I mean one trillion more over the next 15 years. Now here's what's interesting. When you look, look at all of that money, and I mean baby boomers passing along post-generation, as in the war generation money, you've got to ask yourself, why is all that money transferring hands? Because of one reason. Real estate's gone up in value and a lot of that wealth is being transferred. So on the next slide, what you'll see is that brings us to the next point. Billions of inquiries online every year. First point on all things real estate in Canada. Second, we know that trillions of dollars is coming to Canada because it's in Canada. 17.6 trillion in the States, half of it earmarked for Canadian real estate. But let's slow this down before we speed it back up. And that goes to the third point. Three and 97, what does that mean? That means that only 3% of the world's wealth only 3% of the world's wealth is in Canada. 97% of that world's wealth is outside of Canada. But when you go through the statistics and when you go through the, the, the information, here's what we know. When we poll the 97% and ask them, where is your money going to go over the next five years? Over 65% of that money is earmarked for, you guessed it, real estate. Yeah, real estate. And when asked, what kind of real estate? Like, as in, where are you going to put it? 55% of that says Canada for all the reasons that JG's putting up on the screen right now. I mean, when you really look at uh, great investment value per dollar, it's new inventory because all of our real estate is built just pretty much over the past 50 to 100 years. We're politically stable, not exactly politi politically favorable, but we're politically stable. Uh, fiscal policy management is strong, meaning that we run our country financially sound. Healthcare and school system is enviable. And there's a massive ease of immigration policies. We're right now, we're just about to tip towards 300,000 immigrants that come to our country every year annually. And, and they have to live somewhere. But they're not coming with a really great massive amount of money. They need to, in fact, rent from someone. So that's going to give rise to a large buying behavior. That is the rental market. So the fourth reason is that there's an interesting cultural commitment that these people who are actually investing in our country, remember, 3% of the world's wealth is in Canada, 97% is outside this country. Of the 97%, as they're looking at real estate in Canada as an investment, guess what's the number one cultural commitment they have as a buying behavior? Now, some of you might say negotiation, right? Some people might guess this, this intermediation. They what is want, that? What is that, Richard? I mean, what is that's a big word. I'm I'm, I'm not sure I don't I understand it. I don't even know if we spelt it right, but disintermediation means to cut out the middleman. They don't want middlemen in there. And what's like Uber. That's right. Well, if you look at the world, and, and actually I don't know if you said this, JG, but I think I heard you say this. But have you heard of uh, Uber? You know, uh, Airbnb as just two examples. What that tells you is that they're cutting out the middleman. They don't want people in the middle because people want to deal directly with the product, directly with the service, because they want to be, in fact, impacting their net experience. So as a result, you've got to realize that that's what's driving a lot of the technological evolution. And I know, Mr. McLeod, you get this, you hear this, and, and, and I know, dude, JG, you were at the cusp of this. You know that technology is a really big part of empowering people to be in charge of what comes next. So that brings me to the next point the rise of the machine. So a lot of people in the real estate space, this is huge. 
where you're sitting there, you're thinking things to yourself, well, if I make money in the real estate game, gosh, how do I compete with, with all the other people who've been here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years? You know what? It doesn't matter because first of all, they don't understand a damn thing about technology and where it's going. And that point number five is the main reason why to get smart in real estate doesn't require you to learn everything. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to read all the books, attend all the workshops, and have uh, hundreds and hundreds of doors to be smart in real estate. You know what you have to have? A great calculator. Or in our world, in this case, a great AI. So AI is artificial intelligence. And it's a fancier way of saying that like a calculator, remember the old days of the calculator, JG? I use that all the time in school. A calculator is used to plug in numbers that will then tell me what the net result is. AI tells me in advance what I'm gonna look for before I look at it. Saying, I see that you're in math class, I suggest that you're probably gonna want these answers. So AI is just basically about one thing, predicting what you need in advance of needing it. That's you all. Know what, you know what, Rich? There, there are four companies that are better than anyone else at this and really pioneering the way. And, and just so happens we're, we're partnered with one of them. And here they are. You're talking about the four leaders that have, that have really understood that AI is the future. They're pioneering the future. And, it, and, and you know what, what, in talking with Chris from Google, Rich, one of the most fascinating conversations I've had with him is how he, he, and I think you were there, we talked about how the real estate market in general, which is the largest part of the Canadian economy, is actually the furthest behind in terms of technology, in terms of artificial intelligence. The prop tech market, is like fintech. Fintech was a thing in the early 2000s. PropTech's just becoming a thing and we're, we're hitting 2020. This is crazy. Well, and, and the reality there is that it's, it's, it's not because of everything else. It's that there's just some monopolies that actually, in fact, thrive. They thrive in resisting innovation. They thrive in the absence of disruption. And so what you create are some uh, lack of efficiencies because you've got all this lobbying and you've got all this protection. Now, by the way, let me pause for a minute. This is not to make wrong the real estate industry or the realtor industry. That's not what I'm saying. What, what's interesting is that in our lifetime, we have an incredible industry that has yet to be truly disrupted and innovated and maybe even in fact reinvented in the world of real estate investing because of technology. So not so long ago, JG, you remember that you know, a Kodak went out of business right? Or, or I mean, Atari went out of business. Commodore 64 went out of business. And you think to yourself, how do these companies that were on the cutting edge of great technology go out of business? It's because they mismanaged the opportunity. So, so we have an opportunity right now to say, hey, I see the future. This is where it's going. There's a lot of money coming into Canada. There's a lot of money already in Canada. And all of it is actually slated for one thing. And before you go to the next slide, I'll say it by way of a, of a story. When my uh, mother-in-law passed, my son, so his nonna, passed away. There's three grandsons, and they each inherited a part of her estate. Now, a sad thing it was, and off she goes, and God bless her because I loved her pasta and I loved her as a woman. But all three boys, average age of 13, average age of 13, Mateo was the youngest and the eldest was 14. I asked them, what do you guys want to do with this money? And you know what they all said? Now, trust me, I guess I get they, I, they know I wrote books and this and that. But I've written books on investing and stocks and bonds and mutual funds. I've taught wealth management. They said real estate. And do you want to know why everyone who's inheriting money wants to put money in real estate? Because here it comes. When people inherit money, psychologically, there's something that tells them, I shouldn't spend it. I better invest it wisely. And this better survive my lifetime so I can pass it on. And as a result, that's why the real estate class is what we call REIB. Write this down because it's the first time you've heard it. And go to the next slide, brother. It's real estate investment banking. Now, as the old world was all about real estate investing, which is all about cash flowing first and appreciation possibly with little to no risk or compromising the first, I mean, that worked and it rocked. But real estate investment banking is placing monies in real estate with the intention to preserve, protect, and grow over time with little to no need for cash flow or yield per se. So these boys have put this money in for two years let me ask you something. For all the times I've seen them, including my son who lives with me, of course, how many times do you think they've asked me how the money is going, how the money is doing, what the rate of return is? Zero. And you want to know why? They don't need it. They're not thinking about it. 
And that's the psychology of the future investor. They want to put money in and passively believe and passively remain quite powerfully confident that where their money is will be where it must be 5, 10, 15, 25 years from now. You all get that? We don't believe in nor, in fact, trust the stock market and stocks and bonds and mutual funds like we were taught to in the old days. Real estate's not about an asset class. It's about the class of being in control of where it is, how it remains, and how intact it, in fact, can be believed to be in for the years to come. So, Rich, for real estate investment banking, this is an interesting conversation because we'll slow it down for a second. And there are markets in Canada that are actually experiencing just a titch of this, just a little bit. There, this hasn't, the real estate investment banking phenomena hasn't hit every market, but it's, it has hit a few markets. Which one uh, would you say in particular? Well, first, let me say this, that the real estate investment banking movement is a conversation that you and I are just sharing. Okay. I mean, I mean the old days with GICs, right? Gar which should be called uh, uh, GTLs, guaranteed to lose or Canada sucker bonds. Like, like it was a conversation that drove a behavior where Canadians believed it was their duty to put money into a CSB or a guaranteed investment certificate because there was something secure about it. But security has in fact come at a cost. It came at a cost that posted inflation, uh, net uh, taxes that now it's like, well, hold on. If I'm making 4%, that's 2% after tax. And with inflation at 1.8, I'm barely breaking even. So, so the act of banking lives in real estate. That's number one. Number two is there's no profession on this planet that makes a lot of money by taking it from people and parking it into a wonderful asset class for the next two, five, 10, 15 years, because they don't get to what? They don't get to turn it over. Charging fees, earning commissions. Charging fees, earning commissions. So there's no profession that's really interested in learning how to do that unless it puts a roof over your head and keeps you safe and sound. So it all very much is setting up people to lose when it comes to preserving and protecting their financial legacy. They're set up to lose. There's no way for them to win. And, and where it makes the most sense to answer your question now, where you'll see the lion's share of money being banked in real estate, and it comes in the following order, Ontario, Alberta, and BC. And for three major reasons. One, there's already a lot of wealth there, number one. Already a lot of wealth there, and wherever there's already a lot of wealth, wealth will transfer hands, an intergenerational wealth transference. Point number two is there's lots of succession planning going on. Businesses are being sold because the kids don't want them. So as boomers turn 60 or 65 or 70, kids are saying, pops, mom, I'm out. I don't want this, this factory, this shop, that retail spot, or this business. So they're selling those businesses and they're taking the cash and they're parking in real estate. But third and most important is the international buyers are settling into those three provinces because of the jobs, because of the economy, because of the state of affairs. It's not to make wrong Saskatchewan or our friends in Manitoba, and I've got nothing wrong or bad to say about our friends in the Maritimes or in Quebec. What I'm just saying is that based on the statistics, those are the three provinces that stand to profit the greatest in the greatest movement of capital into real estate over the next 25 years, and that's real estate investment banking. And a lot of that money is coming from within our borders, but also from outside our borders, right, Rich? And we're going to talk about that in terms of we're going to talk about that in technology and prop tech and how prop tech is actually going to fuel the moving of money from, uh, from, from offshore to inshore. And uh, we'll talk about that. And, and, and if, if we stopped right now, if, if there was a flash on our screen from the energy company locally that said, sorry, fellas, we're going to have a huge uh, breakdown in energy. Your webinar has to end in three minutes. Right here, we should end and end on this. You know money is coming. You know that behaviorally people are going to be parking more money than they've ever had in the history of mankind over the next 15 years into real estate. And you know that the international appetite is at an all-time high because at an all-time high is anxiety, socioeconomic concern, and geopolitical upset. All this money is coming. Who's going to take directions, take instructions, and help these people? I think right now I would get into the real estate investment banking business and saying, hi, I'm Richard Dolan. I'm a specialist in the Canadian real estate landscape. And if you're looking to park long-term money that needs to be preserved and protected over the long-term to preserve your financial legacy, I would love to buy you a cup of coffee and give you the precise and the most incredibly complete plan to have that 
meet your needs? When can we meet? I've got availability tomorrow morning. You get what I'm saying? Like Richard, right you there. Make, you, make just, it sound, you make it sound so easy, Rich. You're like a silver tongue fox, brother. But dude, it's not just about being silver tongue. It's about being sensible, logical, and really having my ears open without filters of this is too good to be true. What's too good to be true, right? The opportunities are right here. So I, I, I'm all excited. I'm going to I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this though, Rich, and that's why we've prepared this webinar. And that's why there's people from coast to coast on this webinar because they want to find out, you know, I think the six realities we just presented, Richard, people feel them. And, and at this point in the webinar, I often get people tell me, I knew it. I could feel something was different. I could feel something shifting, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't quite understand. Now they know. It's called prop deck, and it's a whole wave. It's a wave, and you're going to have two choices. Really, Rich, and I don't know how deep we're going to get into this tonight because I'm not sure how much your tequila and my wine is going to impact this, but I got to say this, though. I got to say this. The wave, can you can either ride this wave and it'll be the best ride of your life or the sucker might swallow you. Mm. Or tear your shorts off like they did for me when I was in Ixtapa once and I looked for those shorts for like an hour. I had to walk naked back to the hotel because a riptide tore, tore my shorts off. It, it was horrible. <laughs> More on that another time, folks. <laughs> I'm so sorry, folks. Now, now, now you have to literally jump in a car, find a squirrel, run over just to get the image out of your mind of Richard Dolan walking back to his hotel because he lost his shorts at sea off the shores of uh, Cancun. That's funny. So, so folks, if you want to ride this wave, we recommend, our recommendation is four things you need to do. One is upgrade your education. We're going to talk about that next. Then secondly is building an advisory business. And Rich, I really want to talk about building an advisory business because Building a transactional business is different than an advisory business. And we're going to dig into the difference a little later. Then the third thing is how to leverage technology and specifically capitalize on AI because, man, AI doesn't lie, Rich. And we're going to talk about that tonight in terms of how it's going to impact the real estate market and actually some cutting edge technology that our company is releasing, Legacy, which is super cool and going to really revolutionize how, how real estate entrepreneurs do business. You know, this reminds me of probably the old days. I used to see my grandfather and he would sell, uh, you know, these, these old uh, machines and they were called sewing machines. And, and in his case, he'd carry this case and inside there was a sewing machine. And I mean, I'm talking about the things he did back in the 40s and 50s. But my point is that when he became a door-to-door -door salesperson, everything he needed was in that case. I mean, the brochure, the order form, and his, you know, his, his display unit. So this is kind of like the future of that, right? But we're not sewing anything except sewing bags, of cloth together because you're gonna make so much money doing this. <laughs> um, but I mean, the, the education, the tool set on how to build an advisory business so you learn how to advise people, lead people, coach people, mentor people, be a great leader. You know, the technology itself and the AI, which is really the, tech te the, the technology that lives in the technology itself, all that stuff basically says you will, you'll have everything you need to play well or to play beyond your expectations but you get to dial it up or down. You don't have to learn everything. You don't have to master nothing. You just have to have what you need. So the moment you need it, you've got it. And, and what we call that is the real estate investment advisor. And mm. that's what we're going to spend. Now, whether you do this folks through legacy, which we're going to talk about that at the end, if you're interested in joining us, we'll have a special offer for you. Stick around for that. But one way or the other, Richard, here's what I say. I say these four things you have got, doesn't matter if you do it through us or do it on your own, you have got to upgrade your education. You must transition your business from transactional, which everyone's in the transaction business right now. They just want to focus on doing the next deal, which is very different than building an advisory business and then leveraging technology and AI. That has to happen. Whether you do it through us or not, that's up to you. But this has got to happen for you to ride the wave of prop tech. Well, and another thing about that is a lot of people who are investing in real estate today are a little bit different from who invested in real estate 25 years ago. Today and more than ever before, uh, as people look out to the future, the number one concern people have got is outliving their money, not having an income. And an income is important for the quality of life, the quality of giving, the quality of healthcare, and, and just the quality of their legacy. So, so upgrading your education means 
what other ways of conversing about real estate must I learn so that when people are talking about the concerns they've got about generating an income for any of those reasons, I know I've now got a trained ear to hear the place and purpose, the place and purpose that real estate and I can play in helping that person out. So Rich, what do we cover? Our program, uh, which is the Real Estate Investment Advisor Program, it's a certification program, it's a 100 hour digital online, but it also comes with a, a quick start program, which by the way, folks, is happening in March, um, where you can get certified. Talk to me about the different components of what is covered in that program, because this is critical to upgrading education. So, so here's what the education does. I'm going to keep it. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it really simple. I'll get excited when I need to get excited, but I'll slow it down when I know you've got to really get this. Okay. Don't let the hundred hours of digital academia scare you because really what you should really get is the fact that we're, we could teach you in two days. It is in March. Uh, where it's going to be digitally taught online so you can save yourself 100 hours of painstaking efforts of being online and in front of a, a computer screen when you find the time. But what it does is it just trains you on the bare essentials so that you can get yourself clear understanding and seeing yourself clearly in the conversation, being of service as an advisor. And by the way, being an advisor doesn't mean giving people real estate investment advice. In the real estate realm, when it comes to investing in it, you're going to learn how to listen and take action, listen and lead, listen and activate people so that you can, in fact, either make money with them, off them, right, or together alongside them. Perfect. Now, one of the, as you can see, Rich, the, the third one there, financial preparedness and organization. That's a hot topic for us. And I know you're really passionate about it. It's something that we've been pioneering. Literally, this information doesn't exist. I mean, we created this information. And thank goodness we did because it's critical, isn't it, Rich? Well, you know, it really, really is. And, and I got to tell you that when I see the screen, what you see is a, a, a screen of a fire up ahead. And, and the analogy I want to paint for you is this. Imagine for a moment, and I apologize if this is insensitive to our friends uh, in Calgary, especially in the Fort Mac area, because um, if you were driving up on your neighborhood and your car was approached by the fire chief and that fire chief leaned into your window and you said, what's going on? And he says to you, look, your house is on fire. You've got though five minutes where I can send you in and you can get whatever is important to you to come on back out safely in one piece. But whatever you grab, it's got to go into your trunk. It has to fit in your trunk. You have to ask yourself right now the question, what would you grab? What would you grab? And I've asked this question across the country into thousands of people and they say things like, you know, their photo albums and their wedding dresses. Uh, they'll, they'll find heirlooms, the kids, uh, <laughs> in-laws in are optional. The of cat. Course, but the pets are, the, the, the pets are mandatory. Uh, even in some farm towns, I always hear a cry out for Cialis or their Viagra. My Viagra! And it's like, hey, you, you, priorities, priorities, especially in the winter, you got to get, you got to keep what you uh, close and handy. But, but the moral of the story is this, is that as people ramble on about what they get, here's the worst part of it. When I ask them the question, where are those items? Can you envision where it is? They have a real hard time. And that five minutes evaporates. So the quality of our financial preparedness has got to be equal and proportionate to our financial organization. Said in a different way is that one of the main things that, that an REIA is equipped to do, that you could be equipped to do, is to be able to get people financially prepared and organized. Financially prepared and organized in their financial lives so they can have everything they need and they're aware of everything they have so they can, in fact, know exactly where to go and what to get. Very cool. So, Rich, let's look at, this is a, this is a screenshot of, of our online university, essentially, our online academia. Walk me through some of this stuff. I mean, we obviously cover the fundamentals, and, and I know you, you personally curated a, a ton of this content. A lot of it is taught by you. A lot of it is taught by other experts. I mean, this program, and it's 100 hours, folks, but, but there's actually a lot more than that. If somebody really wanted to dig in there, optional stuff, there's an incredible amount of information. And so, Rich, tell us a little bit about what's included in the, in the learning, what people are going to get, well, what they're going to learn. Well, you know, you hit most of the highlights already and stole all my thunder. Um, but I will, I will add a few things. As I, as I always do, I'm sure. Here, here's what we did just to simplify it. We, 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 we knew that being an REIA is made up of two parts. 
what it means to get into the real estate space, right? And, and understand the importance of providing advice, leadership, and mentorship. But, but, but more importantly, what it means to be an entrepreneur. Um, and what it means to be an entrepreneur, be in business for yourself. What it means to, in fact, generate an income. What it means to be organized as someone who's going to be at their source of their own commercial success. So taking those two and putting them together really creates the REIA. So the program, yes, uh, curated by me, but I mean made up of a number of incredible professors, authors, and award-winning lecturers who speak on certain and specific pro uh, topics. And I know you just flash a few up here, like uh, the fundamentals of transforming your ideas into business, how to get your product and market targets uh, considered, uh, the economics of uh, practicality. Now, now, here's what I want to caution you on. All of this, all 100 hours of the digital academia is important. Absolutely. But you don't need to learn it all in order to step into our world and begin using the tools. Like, mm -hmm. like unless you're JG, right? Unless you're JG, I don't know about you, but the only way I've learned to use my own computer is by trial and error, right? And I unlock its potential over time and while I fumble my way through it. And once in a while, I'll hang out with a guy or a gal who's smarter on my system than I am and say, hey, have you ever done this? Have you ever done an airdrop? Have you ever done a, a this or have you ever done a that? And you'll learn as you go. you learn as you go. So I want to take the edge off from the idea that if, if, if I want you to put your hand up right now. I know, I know I can't see you, but I can feel you. Put your hand up if you want to make a lot more money this year and for the rest of your life. Well, now put your hand up. Now, the, now, hands, the hands are going up. The hands are I, going I, up. I, but then this is what I'll say. Take the edge off of thinking that you've got to learn it all. You've got to get it all right. You've got to get it all under your belt and within record time. Screw it. You don't. You don't need to know everything you need to know to get into the gym and lose some weight. You don't need to know everything there is to know about a car before you drive it. You don't need to know everything there is to know about uh, life preservation to jump in the lake. You, you just got to know what you need. And as long as you know what you need and you can move with some confidence and have a conviction and commitment to keep learning, that's all it takes. So if you're going to make an investment into learning what you need so that you can take advantage of the technology that we have so that you can get a little piece, not all of it, but a little piece of that $1.8 trillion that's coming our way over the next seven years, gosh, isn't that worth it? Like, isn't that worth it? I think it's worth it. Huge. So yeah. upgrading, upgrading your education is the first step. The second step, Rich, that we talked about is building an advisory business. Now, if you and I were sitting, were sitting at a bar, which we sometimes are. I love that idea. I love that idea. <laughs> and you were to take out a napkin and, and I was to say, Richard, I got my glass of wine. You got your glass of tequila. Now, please draw me a picture and show me what being an REIA, a real estate investment advisor is all about. How do I make money? Mm. You walk me through that, Rich. Okay. So, so for all of you on this particular call, I, I'm the first REIA to exist, right? So I was the first test pilot. So <laughs> I put on the helmet, I jumped in the cockpit, and I took off, and I had no idea what was going to fly, how it was going to go. But if you just punch a, a couple of keys there for me, buddy, I'll start showing them. So, so there's three places. There's three places I can find myself a client. Either someone brand new, someone I met at the Starbucks, someone that works out with me at the YMCA, someone I work with, uh, perhaps even a, a friend or family member. I, that's one place I can find a client. Current, so a lot of our friends on this call right now have current clients. You're already a realtor, a mortgage agent, a property manager, you know, a, 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 a renovator of some kind. Whatever it might be, you've got some. Or you're referred somebody, right? So you're referred someone. Like just the other day, I got a friend who called me and said, hey, I've got a friend who just got divorced. They might need some advice on how to sell their place. They've got some cash they need to park somewhere. Can you take that person on? And that's a real life example. I got a referral. So those are the three simple places you can get what's called a client. Just say it out loud so I engage you. Say client. Client. Okay, th that was enthusiastic, JG. I will mark you down as a pass, but with caution. All right, all right. So <laughs> <laughs> then what you do is now that I've got a client, I'm going to put them into our proprietary assessment tool set. And so what we call that assessment tool set is called the FLQ, the, the, the financial life quotient. And, and, and really what that's a fancy way of saying, I want to get a sense of the quality of your life the quality of your financial life. So if you click a couple more clicks there, because uh, you're controlling this, it, it, it then gives rise to understanding just what have they got and what's missing, or what do they need and what action should we take? So as an REIA, all I'm doing is first finding that conversation, a client. 
Number two is I'm saying I'm gonna deploy my tool and it's digital, check this out, fill this out, or if I can walk you through it, so that at the end, all I'm significantly gonna do is qualify the fact that I'm gonna push them now onto the right qualified person to give them the solution that we've discovered they need. Now, you might be lucky enough for someone to say, but I have this need. Fantastic, we skip the steps. And you're like, in- like, like if, if they needed a mortgage, they, they need a mortgage, they're doing a deal, they need to refinance, like they're doing something, so they have a need right now. That's what you're saying, Rich? That's right, that's right. And a lot of people that are already inside of the real estate investment world, and you know who you are. We've got a lot of friends on this call right now. You know what I'm talking about. You're already talking to people. And, and, and by the way, in this particular case, you already are looking like a professional because you've got your REI, but you've got now at your disposal great people to refer some finance needs to or wealth management needs to or insurance needs to. So you've got yourself your own team. And I would write that down, team. Because really now what you've got is your own professional team that you can defer and refer to. You can defer and refer to. And that results in revenues. If someone does a deal, you get paid. If they repeat the business, they go and borrow money and then they like the process so much they borrow it again, you get paid. If they in fact want to renew their deals, you get paid. And you know what happens often? 65% of the time, if someone enjoys the process, they in fact say, I've got a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law or a neighbor or friend that needs your service too. Can you please give them a call? That's fantastic. Or as the little rascals would say, okay. So with that, that leads you to the following three ratios. First, you can through if you can see this as a possibility that you can endure, you can do, you can execute, you can make yourself a hundred grand. Easy all day long. Maybe as much as a quarter of a million dollars. I'll tell you right now that if I was in Ontario, as I currently am, I can definitely do a quarter of a million bucks doing just that. And as a result of building my own little REI business in two, five, 10, 15 years, these are my clients. So perhaps I'll sell it to a young fella or a young uh, gal who would say, hey, I wouldn't mind taking over your practice, your business, your real estate investment advisory firm, then I can sell it because it's got clients. And now I've got myself some income for life, which will be spent by me and only me. I would give it to my son, but usually probably me. So Rich, it really sounds like the finance, wealth, insurance, and realty, that's, that's legacy. That sits under legacy. And it kind of sounds like it's a one-stop shop. It sounds like really the one place where people can go to get it all done. And I don't think that really exists anywhere else in Canada, does it? Well, and it gets worse than that because a lot of people could be sitting on the phone right now watching the screen saying, well, hold on a second there, Slick. If, if I have my own realtor, my own wealth guy, my own insurance person, my own realtor, then why would I need legacy? You don't. As an REIA, you don't have to use legacy. But here's the three things you need to know about referring business to professionals. You got to make sure that they're in fact ethical and always. Ethical and always. You got to monitor them on an ongoing basis. And unfortunately, only as often as you send them business will you know in fact how uh, ethical they really are. Number two is you got to make sure that they're damn well actually equipped to deliver on the results they promise. And you just won't do enough business to know that. In legacy, we're generating a business at a rate where we're getting to constantly watch the needle and how it moves. But the third and the best part, the third and the best part is, legacy is in fact going to lobby for higher payouts, higher commissions, higher referral fees, because the aggregate group, right now we have over 500 REIAs across the country, with all of them generating referrals, with all of them doing business, with all of them working with a select few within our stable of professionals, we're able to warrant a higher payout, a higher bonus, a higher fee, greater service to every client. So when you're just one, you're one of well, you're one of one. <laughs> and that's gonna be really hard to get the highest payout. But when you're one of many, now you've got yourself at your advantage and to your advantage, the breadth and size of the collective. So let's go through, Rich. There's, there's several scenarios, and we're going to spend, I promise, 70 minutes roughly. So we're going to have to go quick here, bud. But you got some scenarios that you've outlined. So what if, if there may be someone who's a stay-at-home parent, there may be someone who wants to do this kind of like a half part-time. Walk me through how, did, how they make money. I, I think that's a great screen right there for someone to take a picture of. If you're sitting with your camera, if, if you want to do a screenshot, take that right there. Should I take I, out the Polaroid? Should I take out the Polaroid? Well, yeah, well, for those BlackBerry users, they're like, they're scrambling right now for a real, a real Kodak, and they're probably winding it right now and holding the button for the charge and the flash, right? <laughs> but with all kidding aside, I mean, you could probably make 
anywhere from $25,000 a year if you put a few hours a week into being an REIA. But if you're all in, I mean, if you want to do this full time, you can make upwards of about $117,000 a year. And, and then, then some. And then some. But you're somewhere in between. So we're not saying this is millions overnight. But I mean, here you have a, a, a half part time. What I mean, that's, 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 that's part time, part time where you've got already a job, you've got the kids, you've got practice, you've got to cook, you've got to clean, you've got to feed, you've got to walk the dog, you've got enough to do. So just at a part-time, part-time, right? Or an add-on to your existing real estate practice or your existing mortgage agency or your existing portfolio. I mean, it's just a bolt-on. You'll make yourself about 25 grand a year. That's and that's working, that's working with five to nine clients. You can see it there, Rich, five to nine on the screen. That's five to nine clients a year. That's not, I mean, that's not rocket science, man. And it's, and yeah, and it's very conservative. It's not American. If it was American, it'd be like 500, 600, 900. <laughs> but, but we're talking about five clients, six clients. That, that'll get you there. The next slide is- now, this one is specifically, Richard, for a realtor. You can see that real estate line. You see how it's empty? That's mm -hmm. because this is made for like a realtor example. So walk us through. Well, this example, I, I, actually, I won't walk you through. I'll just say something. This is a real life example of what realtors are reporting that as they've added the REIA element to their practice, they're the realtor of choice, but this is a complement to their revenues. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm very cognizant to the regulatory requirements. You're allowed to make money so long as you disclose it. There is no law that prevents you from making money in other industries or doing other things, but you've got to disclose. That's it. That's the only caveat. So in this particular case, on average, realtors can make about $72,000 extra a year bolting the REIA onto their realtor business. And that's, this is a way to monetize all conversations. That's right. Perfect. And what if you're all in? Well, and this is a big deal for people who are looking to, you know, retire um, or are on their way out are looking to quickly head to the exit because they're sick and tired of where they work. They don't like the dead end vocation. They hate working for him or her, whatever it might be. This is where if you just want to become an REIA, this is who I'm going to be. I'm calling my mom. I'm calling my dad. I'm letting everyone know. That's it. I'm out. I'm going to start being a real estate investment advisor, a professional who's going to be the ultimate curator of bridging the gap between people and their money and real estate opportunity in Canada. Focus full time. You'll get yourself to $117,000 in no time. And we're talking about starting with as little as 24 clients and ramping your way up there. And I mean, with 1.6 billion searches online every year in Canada, I think starting with 24 clients, that's two a month for the mathematically challenged. That's not a difficult task. That is yeah. not a difficult task. 100%. 100%. So that's just a sample of, of sort of how to get certified and how the business component works. But Rich, if you really want to build a business, and this I get really excited about because we've built an entire turnkey system that really considers both a business plan, customer tools, turnkey tools, marketing, and a sales plan, because it's not just, you need to be supported. And as I like to say, everyone wants to be in business for themselves, but they don't want to be in business by themselves. Mm. And this is where the turnkey business systems come into play. And this could be all included. It depends on what option people want to take. Most people obviously take all of these systems, but Rich, I am really proud of all the work we've done to create, to help people with their business plan. And I mean, you have done such an amazing job. I mean, having taught at the Shuley School of Business, bringing all of that information, all that knowledge uh, to and all your wealth management knowledge and how to build wealth management businesses, we're bringing that to the real estate investment advisory space, helping people build their business plans, helping really providing turnkey customer tools that never existed before. White papers, right, Rich? White papers written for people? Well, it, you know, what people may not know is that I, I started off in the financial services industry in 1991. So um, don't let these good looks and young charm fool you. <laughs> I, I, I've been around a long time. And I mean, this was, I was there when the rise of the financial advisor was there, when the rise of the financial planner was there. And, and they started their business the exact same way. The only difference between being an REIA and a financial planner is aside from registration and licensing is that you're dealing in a space called real estate. And I believe people today and for the next 25 years plus believe far more in that asset class than any other asset class in the world. Um, so, you know, really at the end of the day, getting into business for yourself, 
that's a great move. But getting into business for yourself in real estate and helping others get into it too, that's just a, that's just a no brainer. So tell us about some of these tools, Richard. I'm just clicking through. I mean, you saw some white papers, you saw some books. These are, these are tools that our real estate investment advisors get to use to build their business. I think what's important is I can't go through any one in particular, but it just gives you a sense. What, what you should be getting is getting a sense of the, 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 the accurateness, the cleanliness, the crispness, and the exactness of all the education, the tools, and the collaterals that we've poured hundreds of hours into curating, developing, producing. And I mean, a big shout out to Nick Banks and, and, and JG and, and Bonnie Canesso, uh, our dear friend and, and, and partner. I mean, everyone's worked so hard just to make sure that we're really developing the platform and launch pad for you to get really wealthy in the real estate game in a new way. And that's actually the launch pad and the platform is where we're at because we built a resource portal, not only full of turnkey tools, but also full of technology so people can literally track their business. They, from a CRM perspective, can see what deals are approved, where deals stand. As clients flow through the system, you can actually, this is really cool stuff, Rich. You can see the client and track them through the entire funnel, the entire sales funnel, which populates into a pipeline of your CRM, which then populates into a deal pipeline so you can see exactly how much money is going to come in. All of this is done. This technology is all built by us for our real estate investment advisors. And again, it comes back to being in business for yourself, not by yourself. So, so just to simplify what, what I'm really getting from you, you know, kind of getting through all this, I'm getting the sense of all the systems, all the structures, all yep. the processes, all of this is all turnkeyed, right? All the, mar all the marketing, all the websites, social media, blogs, and our Google partnership. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that, Rich. I don't know. If you've not heard of Google, you should probably Google them. But, but Google, Google, Google has given us um, some really great support and access to the Google Analytics, Google Correlation, Google Trends, and, and all other Google-type tools that allow us to make you sound sharper. So as you either professionalize yourself as a real estate investor so you can raise your profile or increase your credibility, or you want to optimize yourself as a real estate professional. So you can also not only generate more profile and generate more credibility, Google's not a bad, you know what, just being associated with a brand called Google is not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of associations, Rich, I'm really proud of some of the associations we've created, some of the tours we've done, some of the speaking you've done with some pretty massive names. I know you were just on stage with Deepak Chopra uh, right before the last year. You just were on stage literally with Ellen and Tony. Like Ellen was before the end of the year. Tony, just a couple of weeks ago. Tell us what's happening. Legacy's partnered really closely with these massive brands to bring this to the rest of the world. And, and, and what's interesting here is the reason why we are is because think about it. We've got now over 500 REIAs that are saying, you know what, I want to tell my friends and family that I matter, that, that I'm far more important now than ever before, and I'm far more professional than you ever thought. So what we've decided to do is call some of these old friends and some of these old colleagues, and every time they come through Canada, I'm touring with them representing legacy. So that in the audience, and I mean the last audience we saw was just in Edmonton a few uh, weeks back where we had 5,000 people in that room. Uh, we're going to see another uh, 22,000 when I'm on stage with Barack Obama on March 5th, and, and Ellen will be back in Toronto March 3rd and 4th. Uh, I'm in Toronto, I, I mean, the whole point is not to uh, impress you with these names, but to impress upon you that when they come through the country, legacy will be there. So you can attend, bring your friends and family, bring your customers, or don't attend and take some of the collaterals that we produce out of being at that event and just, just sprinkle it across your social media your friends, your family, or your database to say, hey, my firm was involved with the upcoming Deepak event or the Tony Robbins event or the Barack Obama event. And I think that's pretty classy. What an amazing sales tool to be able to have that on your side, Rich, to be able to help you sell, help you network, help you close deals. I mean, that's incredible. Now, uh, you've been, you've actually reserved your, uh, your excitedness quite a bit. You, you've been good but I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to head into a section here where I don't, I'm not sure you're going to be able to control yourself, brother. Oh you know, I'm not sure you're going to be able to control yourself. And now we're going to talk about the technology, the prop tech, the very prop tech tools we are developing. So, folks, we see this coming. We see this wave coming. And we're not saying, hey, there's the wave. You should jump on. We're saying, there's the wave. 
We've jumped on. We've built the tools. Come for a ride with us. Let us take you along for this ride. So, Rich, we got three incredible platforms coming out. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, you know, the, the tool just, I think this just takes it to the next level. I know when sometimes I'm even looking at this and thinking this might even be too damn much. It's almost like... When it's, think- cer- it's certainly, Rich, you're definitely right because it feels like it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, it's a bit too good to be true, quite frankly. My gut yeah. just said that to me, but it, it is. And I think, I guess, when I look at it, you think to yourself... If I have the opportunity of taking advantage of the largest transference of intergenerational wealth over the next 25 years, I know that it's all going to go directionally into real estate. If I set myself up so I can have smart conversations and present myself as a real estate investment advisor, I can get some of that. But now I can actually utilize technology to be able to find where real estate investment opportunities are, that's Reese, and produce the calculations that are needed because I don't know how to make those calculations, but this REI Analytica does. Fantastic. And when I'm not on the phone or available by email, I've got this robo advisor, this robo chat feature that will talk to clients for me. That's just, now it's like, wow, I, 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 there's something up with you guys. I would have to say that, but that's what it is. And I think this is the part that really should put people over the edge to say, This is pretty neat. I mean, I could really dig this. Yeah. So let's dig deep. You know, give us a little bit, Rich. So Reese is a peer-to-peer digital real estate investment property system where we're going to connect real estate investment investment opportunities with real estate investors. Peer-to-peer, it's essentially pocket listings in your pocket, right? That's right. Perfect. Now, REI Analytica, that's like a mind blowing calculator. Now, Rich, I know you got some slides on this. I'm going to put them up for you um, in terms of what the calculator takes into effect when it's making some of these calculations to truly become a crystal ball and kind of project, predict the future. Well, here's the thing. You know, the, the, what AI is, is AI is, is deep learning. So it's about teaching a machine on what to look for. And so in this particular case, we built a machine that we told it, look for great real estate investment opportunities where there's great schools with high ratings. So if you just go through them a little bit quicker, commute times that are great, public transportation that's current and planned. Let's teach this machine to learn for uh, demographics and housing map layers and uh, searching by walk scores, transit scores, and bike scores, uh, price drops. Let's have those pop up when our AI is searching for great opportunities. So it starts kicking off these great market trend charts. And then it starts helping me do this, where the REI calculator, the real estate investment calculator and planner helps me plan, prepare, and have my clients prosper by saying, answer the following questions. How much money have you got, right? By when do you want to retire? How much cash do you want to put into your plan on an annual basis? And what's your annual retirement uh, income goal? And once you give it those dynamics, it will come up with proportionate to the number of years till retirement, the precise year after year, step-by-step actions to take based on the AI. So as an REIA, I don't have to know all this stuff. All I have to know is how to have a conversation with someone and ask them those three questions, which I just asked you just now. Uh, so with that being said, all I have to know is how to punch in numbers, which I think we all know, given the (laughs) call and out comes this great market, uh, analysis and plan. Best part is because AI is robust and it's always scouring the data that it's being fed. It will adjust this plan based on economic conditions and market valuations. So you don't have to No second. It is pretty cool. And, and when you combine all this information with the AI, what's really going to happen, Rich? And this is the part that it gets just absolutely crazy. I mean, if, if it so far is too good to be true, this part becomes mind-blowing because then you consider that you have ADA. And ADA is Artificially Intelligent Digital Advisor. The way I explain it, Rich, is ADA is like Siri for real estate. Siri's always working for you. She's always... She's always there you say hey siri she picks up she see there she she picked up she she picks up and she's on the go she's on the fly she's ready to help you ada is going to be like that but for real estate now as ada is scouring the marketplace she's looking at the current places you own the current doors you own is it time to sell is it time to fix is it time to flip is it time to refinance 
what is it time to do? And she, Ada, and I don't know why Ada's a woman, but I feel like Ada's a woman. So she, Ada, uh, messages you and says, hey, based on your current location, you got some great investment properties that are close to you. Do you want to have a look and check it out? I mean, you have someone looking for real estate deal, deals for you all the time, and that's pretty incredible. Right? So now, Rich. I, I agree. No, no, no. You, you, I'm, I'm just floored by it. It's, it's, I mean, what Ada is going to bring to the prop tech market is what Siri and Google Assistant have brought to the digital device. I mean, imagine, you, you couldn't imagine when you used to own a BlackBerry, remember that thing you did with the thumb and you, you got, you got carpal tunnel, you got carpal tunnel, everyone had carpal tunnel back then. Funny you don't hear about that anymore. Um, but it's like, imagine Siri on a BlackBerry. You just couldn't, you couldn't fathom it then. It didn't, you couldn't understand. And today we are here, Rich, we're announcing this. We're talking about this is coming. And a lot of people can't fathom it. A lot of people can't really get themselves there. Why do you think that is? Well, because they're still using rotary phones. <laughs> but it's, 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 the, it's, it's the law of fusion, right? It's, it's, there's, there's the early adopters and the, and the midstream adopters, the peaked out adopters, and then the late adopters. You know, it, it, it happens. Every single innovation has its time. Like, my God, I just started buying stuff off Amazon maybe a matter of months ago thanks to you. But yeah. I, mean, the, I mean, I've been very resistant of buying things online for many, many years. I don't trust them. What about, about a security breach? Someone can steal my identity. You know, but man, I, I mean, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon right now and I love it because it's easy. So it, it's, just, it's just allowing yourself the opportunity of, of, of learning something new and being comfortable about being uncomfortable. Well, being, being, yeah. A Amazon, you said something interesting there because Amazon, there's actually people on this webinar right now that don't shop on Amazon. But you know what? The fact is, is Am Amazon is reshaping the entire business landscape. Whether you shop with them or not doesn't matter. They are reshaping the entire industry landscape and it's happening regardless. And it's the same with prop tech, prop tech except for one massive exception. If we would have sat here, Rich, and told these fine folks about Amazon in 2008, in 2009, in 2006, they would have thought the same thing they're thinking now. My gosh, that's kind of crazy. Amazon will not, Amazon will not put chapters out of business. Amazon will not put, you know, all, Whole Foods out of business. They won't buy all these companies. They Toys R Us. Toys R Us. They won't be delivering stuff via drone. You couldn't fathom it then. Don't let that, you know, if you let that control your thinking, you're going to miss this wave, Rich. And that's really what we're here kind of yelling from the rooftops, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a book I once read, it's either you evolve or die. And uh, I don't care if your VCR still works real great or if you enjoy your uh, hi-fi, high-def audio tapes. The reality is that you're not getting the most out of life, right? So as much as a tube TV still works, it doesn't compare to my 4K. And, and as much as you love your Blu-ray, it doesn't compare to my iTunes 4K downstream. So yeah. it's, it's, a matter, it's a personal choice saying, you know what, I'm not going to resist the idea of learning something new. I'll be open to it, but at my own pace. And if you allow that, if you just let that in, I promise you that your life will be a lot different. Your life will be elevated. And in fact, you'll transcend what's predictable and you'll start entering into a place of unpredictability, but profitability. And um, I think that's the real step for people. It's not about an investment, which this is about. And this is not about taking a step in, in, in the right direction, which this is about. This is about saying, you know what? I'm willing to actually, uh, you know, head off to second base and loosely letting my grip go of first. But you can't get to home without losing first base. You got to round the bases. Um, and that's what this conversation becomes quite uncomfortable for people, JG. So that's, and that's, that's beautiful, Richard. And, and I think that this is, so folks, those of you who have stuck with us, we're now entering 67 minutes. We're actually going to hit our 70 minute timeline, which is very impressive. Wow. Uh, usually you and I get together and it just flies off the handle, but uh, here we are, we're wrapping up. So folks, if you stuck with us all this time, you have learned an incredible wave of opportunity that's coming. Now, how you're going to capitalize on it is entirely up to you. We have an option for you tonight. We have an opportunity for you. We have one way for you to capitalize on it. And, and we hope that you join us. So Richard, everything we've talked about, the certification, the education, 
building the advisory business, the platform, the technology, the artificial intelligence is all included in what we're talking about. And if people were to do this on their own without us, without all the work we've done, they were just to venture out on their own. I mean, we think by the time you get educated, trained, the research, the mastery, the mentorship, the marketing, the Google partnership, all of that stuff, you're looking at it investing a whack load of money. I mean, we forecasted about $195,000. But if you work with us at Legacy, all of it is included. All of it is included for a fraction, an absolute fraction of the court, uh, cost. And there's really two choices here. Some people, Richard, are saying, this is great. I love what you guys are saying. I want to get certified. I want to get the education, but I want to stop there. I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing, but I want to do it as a certified real estate investment professional or a certified real estate investment advisor. And if you want that folks, fantastic. That's a $6,000 investment. And we'll talk about that in a second. But there's a lot of you actually, in our experience, Richard, most people say, okay, that's cool, but I want it all. I want the business. I want the platform. I want that technology. I want to leverage prop tech. I want the artificial intelligence. So if you want all of those turnkey systems, that's a $25,000 value. And what we have tonight, folks, and Rich, we rarely, rarely do this. In fact, this is something that's actually, we haven't done this yet this year, but we're offering an absolute special price that if somebody wants to get certified, we're going to chop that price in half. Instead of $6,000, it's only two nine nine five. And if someone wants the, all of it, they want the certification, they want the turnkey business systems, they want the platform, they want the technology, they want the artificial intelligence, and they want to become a legacy real estate investment advisor, that's a typically a $25,000 value. They can get it for eight four nine five. Now, Rich, we do have a limited number of spots. So if people want this, they got to put their name, phone number, and email in the chat, and one of our people are going to follow up with you. David or Summer will follow up. Now, Rich, why do we have limited spots available? Well, the large reason why is because we don't want to, if we had all 60 people that were on this call or 80 people that we had on this call all jump in and say we're buying it, then what ends up happening is that we will be overwhelmed with onboarding them at the right time and getting them all equipped and getting them all educated all too fast. So we, we really just chunk it down. And I actually think that 10, 10 of the 10 that you have available, I think half are already spoken for. So, but, but, but the number that are there, you want to make yourself one of them because aside from taking advantage of the price, you've got to ask yourself, is it worth it for me to spend $3,000 and upgrade what I know so I can be better at what I do? Or is it really worth spending $8,400 right now and not only getting the education, but all the tools that will make me a better investor, a better advisor, a better entrepreneur, and, and make me sharper and give me the competitive edge in a market space I'm already in. So, so you, you got to hurry up and get in it before this becomes too late because it becomes too late when everyone else has got it around you and saying to you, Hey, have you heard of amazon.com? And you're like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And it's too late. Yeah. So, so for you, it's, it's a matter of just making sure that, um, to answer your question more succinctly, we, we just never onboard more than we can handle proportion to the number of people that we speak to. And because onboarding and, and the support we offer is very, very detailed. It's very, very much hand-holding step-by-step, uh, walking people through, walking with them. And as a result, we limit that. Very good point, Richard. The other thing, folks, and just so you know, there's a lot of people sending in their information now. I think we're probably at about eight from what I can count real quick. By the way, folks, as you can see, the information is private. When you send your phone number, your name, and your email, it's private. Only I, can, only we can see it, me and our team. Um, not everybody can see it. Not all the panelists or the participants can see it. Only us. So just so you know, it's private. It's confidential. Our team will follow up with you, get you signed up. In fact, folks, if you have questions you know, that you want to get answered, you want to put your name and information in there. You want to get the, the questions answered. Because I know this, Richard. I know this, which is, you know, it's if you wait and you miss this prop tech movement, it may be the best move of your life. I tell you this, in we all think this, and Richard, you're going to really appreciate this because you actually did it. But when it was the recession of 2008, every investor on this line right now, every professional, every investor is thinking, shit, I should have bought more real estate when it was down. You know, if you go back, to the crash 
any crash, any, any wave that came in, and, I, and I'm, I'm citing crashes because those are waves. They present massive opportunities. If you would have had the opportunity to invest and take advantage of the wave that happened in fintech, in you, would have, you should have done it. If you could have invested in Amazon, you should have done it. Here we are, PropTech. We're calling this massive wave that's coming. It's an amazing opportunity. And if somebody doesn't do it, they're, they may regret it. They may, they may not. But I look at it this way, Richard, and walk me through this myself. I look at it from an ROI perspective. If I'm an investor and I want to get into this business, if I'm a professional and I want to get into this business, what is my return on investment of investing 8495 into this? Well, as an investor, I'll make that back on, on a half a deal within the first minute of learning something new. So the ROI is off the charts. As a professional, shoot, shoot just, a, just a couple new marketing systems, a couple new lead generating systems. In fact, Rich, if this system generates one lead and closes one deal, for a real estate professional, whether it be a mortgage agent, a realtor, a property manager, this thing paid for itself. Just one. What do you think? Do you think it'll do that, Rich? Do you think it'll do that? I think I think it's important to understand that um, you know if you want to get successful in the real estate world in more ways than investing in real estate, then this is the place. You know, you can go and get yourself a real estate license, or you can go get yourself a mortgage license, but you're still going to have to invest in getting the te- getting the test, getting the license, building a business, and then learning the systems likely subscribing to them, likely having to learn from Buffini or some other guy like uh, Richard Robbins. Like you're going to spend money no matter where you go to grow more than you've got because our 3 million year old brain wasn't built or conditioned to succeed. It's only conditioned to survive. And so it takes something. And, uh, and I think that's really important for y'all to know. And, and one thing, Rich, I want to come back around to the platform and the technology because a big part of what really excites people is the platform and the technology. And this, the, what the Reese app is built on a platform that has cost an absolute fortune to build. And I know you know the number that I'm referring to, but it's millions and millions and millions of dollars that we are leveraging that platform to build the, the Canada's first peer-to-peer system. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. And you can be at the beginning of that. In fact, you can really, if you really think about it, Rich, it's kind of like you're getting involved in Uber before Uber was Uber. And, and most people won't get involved at the very early stage, just like when Blockbuster was asked, do you want to invest $50 million in our little company called Netflix? And today, you can't, that same $50 million is actually valued at $56 billion. Netflix is now worth $186 billion. But this is not an investment in the stock. This is an investment in you. And so really, when you look at this, this is not about all those technologies and great analogies, which are great by comparison. What we're really trying to say is, hey, We want you to really futurize yourself, get into the future of where real estate's going and make money as both an advisor, but also a catalyst in those conversations. But there, but Rich, you're, you're absolutely right. This is the, this is just, we're using that as an analogy, but if you were driving cabs and Uber came around and you said, you know what, I'm switching and you went from making, and I know a lot of cab drivers who were used to making 25, 30 grand a year. They went over to Uber, they're making a hundred grand a year. Just like that, one switch, one decision, took advantage of new technology, and they rode that Uber wave. That's really the opportunity here. That's right. Well, that's great. Rich, I think we have one spot left. I'm doing a quick count here, dude. I think we got one spot left. There's still a ton of people on the line, so obviously they're interested. They may have questions. Folks, if you have questions, specific questions, please type them in the chat. Richard and I, we're now over our 70 minutes, although I got a a shout out to you, Rich. We did well. We did this in 78 minutes, which is pretty incredible. Well, you Um, talked for the the last nine minutes, so I came in under time. (laughs) That's all good, man. That's all good. So, folks, if you have specific questions, put them in the chat. We'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Otherwise, put your first name, last name, phone number, email in the chat, and someone from our team will get back to you and get you enrolled in this incredible, incredible opportunity. Uh, I'm super pumped about it, Rich. Uh, it's something that, uh, that's been brewing for some time, Rich. How long have you been building? I mean, you've seen this prop tech wave coming for a really, like you've seen it coming. That's because you're super, A, super smart, B, super well connected, uh, and C, you've been doing this a long time. But this is, for some people, this is new. They've never, for you and I, we live this every day, but 
a lot of people on this call, on this webinar, they, this is brand new. They had never even heard of the word prop tech. Well, the reality is that uh, I've been the president of the Real Estate Investment Network, which is now known as the Real Estate Intelligence Network for, for seven years. And in order for me to preserve and protect the legacy of rain in the business that Don Campbell has built uh, for the past 25 years, uh, you've got to look ahead for the next 25 years and ask yourself, where is it going? And all of what you've learned and all of what you've seen is exactly what we've, in fact, determined. So rather than growing into the future, we thought we'd bring the future here and have you grow into it now. And uh, that's the best way I can put it. So, so it's not about just being connected. It's not even just about knowing the right people or being smart. I think we're all those things. I think it's about just being really intuitive and absolutely courageous to do the right thing. There's an old saying that if you want the Cubs, you've got to be willing to go into the lion's den to get them. Mm -hmm. And um, it takes something. It takes something. Yeah. So, so everything that we've shown you has taken us a massive risk, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of man hours just to get it to the stage. And I think uh, for the investment in you right here, it's, it's, it's the best investment you can possibly make this year for yourself. Uh, and I absolutely agree with that, Rich. And, and, you know, speaking of Don Campbell and Rain, and rain has been, you know, the catalyst to uh, over $15 billion of properties being acquired in Canada. That's a massive portfolio. 40,000 transactions, thousands and, th I mean, 150,000 investors over the course of time. It was Don Campbell and Rain that reinvented the conversation about real estate 26, 27 years ago. Uh, and here, here, Rain is again involved in pioneering. Now, Rain and Legacy are sister companies. Rain is involved in pioneering the future the same way it did it 26 years ago. Rain's doing it again, but this time through the next wave called PropTech. So, Rich, uh, as we end here, and I and again, I got I got one more spot, and I've had a couple. You know what? Now I've actually I'm doing a quick count. Um, I'm probably going to extend it, Rich, if it's okay with you. I'm going to extend it to 12 spots because, wow. I, yeah, is that okay? Can we do that? Yeah, oh, we can do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do 12 spots, folks. There's still a ton of people on the line, so they clearly are interested. They want to do this. I've had a couple more people. I'm, I'm close. I may have one or two spots left, folks, so uh, please sign up. Give us your first name, last name, phone number. We'll have someone call you. And get your questions answered. There's also people who have questions and this isn't really the right forum, Rich. They don't feel comfortable kind of asking them here. So, folks, if you have questions about this particular offer and you think, you know what, I'm kind of, I'm interested. I think I might do this, but I have these two questions. Put your name, phone number, and email in the chat and someone from our team is going to follow up and get those questions answered for you. So, Rich, as, uh, as we wrap it up and give people one last chance to put their information in there, why don't you take us off for a landing, buddy? Take us off for a landing. Doesn't make sense. Why don't you bring us in for a landing and finish this up? Well, you know, Buddha had a great saying that uh, if you ever find yourself angry, you're living in the past. And if you ever find yourself anxious, you're, you're living in the future. But if you ever feel yourself powerful, it's really quite possible that you're living in the present. And uh, so right now, we know where the future is going. But just bring yourself to this moment and realize that this is a decision for you and your future starts here. Starts now, right here in the present. And uh, no better way to live powerfully into a future than to appreciate what's right before you. And I think that's the best way to, uh, to really part ways. So thank you so much for letting me in your home. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me be in my home. Uh, and, and JG, thank you so much for, for hosting such a wonderful, wonderful webinar. A big thanks to uh, David and Summer for supporting us. Uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate all you guys. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. Folks, uh, last call to put your information in there. Thank you, Josie. I appreciate the great feedback. Thank you very much. Uh, name, phone number, and email if you got questions, if you're interested, if you want to get that last spot, go ahead and put your information in the chat. Rich, we're going to sign off now, pal. We'll let people wrap this up, and we'll let David and Summer uh, finish up with the chat. Thank you so much, Richard. I, Good timing. I, Gl you, glass is empty. Good timing. You need a refill, brother. Thank <laughs> you so much, pal. Have a great night. Thanks, guys.